YouTube. Welcome everybody. I'm the Fresh Prince of Dead Air. You are watching the Ethan Klein experience. Um, with well, it's a, also the Ela Klein experience. So I shouldn't get too <laughs> egotistical over here. But today we have with us a very highly coveted guest, one who many of us have probably well, let me just say this, Zach. <laughs> Zach has, uh, how do I say this without getting demonetized? <laughs> many times, <Steve. laughs> Yeah. You had to go there. Well, I was I, like, you I know what, we'll just like, bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> Bell Del. He's actually very starstruck right now. Zach? Yeah. Oh, is he really? He is. <laughs> I'm extremely, uh, my heart sank. What? My, uh, Zach, all right, calm stomach. down, Zach. All right, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, today's episode is sponsored by Liquid IV and Honey Bell. Delphine, thank you for joining us. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I really appreciate the little poster thing at the back and the octopus. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the and Ela, that octopus is actually a family favorite. The dogs love it. Yeah. The kid loves it. Everybody loves the octopus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ela is also all quiet out. So. Yeah. And also, actually, Belle Delphine is going to be my costume, too, for Halloween. Wow. No. <laughs> no. That is going to be cursed. <laughs> so, Hila, how did, so tell me, are you, you, you describe yourself online as a kitty girl. Is that, what does oh, that mean? I said Hila. Oh, I meant Belle, sorry. Belle, you describe yourself as a kitty girl. What does that mean? Ethan, you can't start off the podcast by mixing me up with yeah, your wife. Right. That's a little awkward. Right. Yeah. Well, she's in a kitty outfit. I mean, give me a break. Um, a kitty girl. Well, like, what is a kitty girl? Or like, why? What? Okay, what is a kitty girl? Um, well, in anime, there's this whole like Neko girl thing, which is a. Uh, uh, just like a girl with cat ears and a tail, like a mm. cross between a cat and a girl, and I think it's a just like a cute, a cute character that a girl can be. And I've always liked the whole look of like the cat ears. I've always thought it was really cute. I wish that they were more acceptable to just wear out in public, mm. but I tried that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> so do you? Uh, so when you cruise around outside, are you kind of just like looking normal? Yeah, it depends. Like sometimes I'll dress up for an occasion if I'm like meeting up with friends or I mean before COVID going for like a restaurant or something like that. Then yeah, I'd like dress up and look nice and wear a skirt and all, all things like that. But when I'm just going out, my everyday attire is just like hoodie, beanie, leggings, trainers. No, That's it. no pink no kitty ears do you get recognized no. or do people not recognize you without all the the kitty girl attire i see i would have thought no one would have recognized me when i'm like just like beanie hoodie and stuff like this but i have gone recognized a few times and it's always very strange to navigate because i'm like going out with the mindset that like no one's going to know, who, mm -hmm. like, recognize me. So when I do, it's always like, oh, like, it's always like a, mm -hmm. a surprise. And it's always at the re always at the weirdest places that you've never Oh, yeah, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it like yeah. to meet your fans? Are they kind of like odd dudes? Or have you ever had an odd interaction? Because I can imagine Zach coming up to you. I would be freaked out if a dude like Zach came up to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Listen to Zach. I He's mean... speechless. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> Take it easy over there, Zach. Come on. She's a human being. Yeah, have you ever had um, any weird interactions with uh, fans? Honestly, it's always usually kind of awkward because the people <laughs> who always come up to me are usually quite young. So oh, it, there's, this, there's this really awkwardness of being like, I can't, I can't, um deal with this situation because first <laughs> off i don't even want you to know i exist right <laughs> second off where are your parents <laughs> wow well it's just uh, it's just that's a little awkward little kids because like one. uh yeah i don't necessarily wouldn't want to know that you're talking like under 18 i'm assuming yeah yeah like <laughs> like 15 14 oh boy yeah you don't that want sort that of age you don't yeah, want so that attention what, what i usually say is i just say it's not me <clears throat> And then they're usually like, oh, 
Okay. Oh, really? Oh. You can get away with that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Or I say, they're one 15, that they're is idiots. Really good. Yeah, one is really good is I say like, haha, no, I just look a lot like her. You know, I get that all the time. Ah. I just look like her. And then people are usually like, oh, okay. And then they just carry on. Hmm. And that's fine. <laughs> and so I find that interesting that you're in a way not, why is it that you don't want to be recognized in public? Like, why is it that you, you want that separation for yourself? Um, well, I just don't really like attention that much. Like, um, in real life, I really like to, I mean, I segment everything, like all parts of my life, I segment it. So mm. you know, I've got family, friends, work, real life. And then, you know, but even with friends, I'm not really like me, 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 look at me and things like this. But <laughs> on the internet, I am like that. So it's very, it's so different. Mm. So in real life, I don't really like, I wouldn't like to be like recognized. I just wouldn't like it. I just mm. wouldn't like it. I like, I like, I'm so in my own zone. Like when I'm out in public and I'm going shopping or something, I'm just like, right, I need eggs. I need bacon. I need all these things. I'm just like this. I'm not thinking about, um, hello, I am Belle Delphine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice to meet you sort of thing. <laughs> So, Belle, how did you get into this line of, of uh, per, like, this profession? Is this some kind of something you've always wanted to do? How, do, how did you land on this? Um, I've always been doing, well, bef before I got into the more adult side of things, I always liked things like fashion, and I was more into it back then. I was always into, like, kawaii fashion and things like this. So I basically just took photos of myself, uploaded them on Facebook, and kind of gained like a very, very small following on that. And then... <sighs> what kind of photos were you uploading? Just... J just kawaii, like oh, cute little skirts okay. and crop tops and things Got like it. this. Nothing uh, lewd. Um, yeah. And then I started following older girls who were doing luda things. And I just thought that was really cool at the time and I was still like young at the time so obviously I didn't do it. I waited until I was 18 and then six months into being 18 I think that's when I was kind of like this is something that I'm going to do for myself mm. now and just experiment with it and see how it kind of goes started a patron then and yeah just kind of went from there <laughs> you know you seem to have like such a strategic approach to it is that is am, am I observing that right? Because like you have all these, you're really incredible at like promoting yourself and your brand. I have to say, you're kind of a genius when it comes to that. Is that like, is that intentional? Like, how do you think about all that stuff? Are you have you always been strategically minded? Like, how ahead of time do you plan these kind of like the bathwater girl and the the uh, you know. Yeah. The mystery boxes are insane, of course, and, you <laughs> Thank know, you. they're Thank getting f in fight, or you, you, uh, your hamster got stolen, all this. <laughs> I guess I can ask um, you about each individually, but yeah. Yeah, well, basically what happened was, so when I was 18 and a half, and I started doing all this stuff, straight away, I, I thought about it, because I had to go into it in a work mind frame because before that I was babysitting that's how I was getting my money mm -hmm. and I I just I had one bad really bad night babysitting and after that night I was like I am never what babysitting oh again <laughs> yeah I want to know what happened dude it was so it changed it was your so life bad. look it it was the best night of your life if <laughs> I'm you think curious about it. I had one really bad one too I'm curious what happened yeah. to you so <laughs> How I got all the all the people where they were just all people in my neighborhood. I made little leaflets and I was like, you know, babysitting for six pound fifty an hour, and I just handed them out to all my neighbors. And then I got like loads of uh, of these neighbors contacting me, being like, oh, you know, I'd like you for this day, this day, this day. So eventually, it became a a job out of the blue. Mm. And I had this one regular mum who had two kids, and they were very sweet um so i would babysit them for them often and then i started to realize um i'm trying to think of a nice way to like put it um i think they they had a uh, autism or asperger's oh, or oh. something like this they got quite violent and mm -hmm. um 
I didn't know how to deal with this, mm. right? But I, I just dealt with it the best I could. Um, and then, so she ordered me for one night. It was meant to be three hours. I was like, absolutely fine. Funny story. This was when the exact day Donald Trump was announced that he was president. Ooh. So I was watching the elections <laughs> as this happened. <laughs> so I was I was there. Three hours goes by. She's still not here. She's uh, uh, that's fine. They always go overtime. Parents always go overtime. True. So I was like, that's fine. <laughs> Four hours go by. Still not wow. here. Wow. That that's fine. Long story short, she was sixteen hours <gasps> late. What? And I, I was Holy the thing is I was. I was expecting her to come back, so I stayed awake <laughs> this whole time. Oh. I was just in there, and I was just watching the elections happen, being like, "I'm so, so tired." But even it just, the night just got worse and worse because the kids woke up and they were like bashing like each other and stuff. It was just terrible. It was terrible. Sounds like and a the, bad acid trip. Sixteen hours. <laughs> it was. It was so bad. And the cheek of it all, right, was when the mum came back. She was like, "I'm sorry, I just fell asleep at the play." and <laughs> usually usually parents like they'll tip like i don't know two pounds or three pounds or something just to like because you know if you're paying 17 pounds you're rounded up to 20 mm. or something like mm. this she paid me to the pence <laughs> to the to the pence and i was just like i have suffered <laughs> tonight i have suffered um and then it was just that on top of other things i just i'm, I'm not babysitting again that's it that's so then yeah. i got into loop modeling <laughs> there you go i mean it was uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> although i have to assume you're you're probably being compensated a little bit more than six pounds per hour nowadays i mean that's the crazy thing about the internet is um just it took me back being able to even make money out mm -hmm. of these things because I was getting free clothes from like kawaii companies and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> right. I'm getting free clothes to wear them and I would buy them anyway. <laughs> this is amazing. So when I actually started getting paid for posting photos, I was like, this is mental. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Basically, what happened was I started. So I started doing this adult posting online, and one video went really big at the time. It was the Ahigao face that I did, and it, it, it got big. And then I was like, okay, I'm gaining some followers. I need to take advantage of this. And this mm. is the this is when the spark sort of went for me. Mm. I was <laughs> like, I've got something that could be from this. So what? I, what I did from this point is I was like, I need to figure out a way for people to be interested in me. I've got the taking cute pictures and stuff, but that's not going to really do it. There's so many cute girls on the internet. Mm. I need to do something that will make people even say negative things about me or just, just have a conversation. Having a conversation is how you propel things on the internet is people responding to it and sharing it. So I decided to do weird things in the combination as well as being sexy. Like I'll be sexy and I'll be like cracking an egg in my mouth or something. <laughs> and then people will share that, be like, what the fuck? This girl's so mm -hmm. weird and quirky but or whatever. But they love you too. Yeah. And, but, but I'll also put my image out there. Mm -hmm. So I just started playing on this, doing weird stuff while trying to be... Sexy. Dude, <laughs> hey, well. you're a genius, I have to say. That is genius. I gotta say, I mean, <laughs> you, that's very smart, you know? And that's how you've always come across our, our desk, because I think that's a really good observation. There's plenty of cute girls on the internet. Right. <clears throat> but when you see something and you're like, what the fuck is this? That's when you really share it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zach, which was yeah, the first, so that, uh, when was the first yeah. time you saw Belle, Zach? Oh, uh, when we first, uh, <clears throat> talked about her. Mm. Um, I think it was the um what was the, the bathwater bath yeah. It was the bath that water. That bath water was so you know, <laughs> freaking viral. It was so viral that we were shocked to even hear Howard Stern talk about it on his show. That was for us like Jesus. That, is... that just went like all over the yeah, world well, and all over all ages. Yeah, like, because Howard is like the peak of the pyramid, not just in like who he is, but like if an internet meme reaches that level yeah, of, of, that's main, insane. of main culture, then <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. 
<laughs> what was I, I? It's still crazy. crazy <laughs> was that your crazy. biggest like viral moment? That I think that blew yeah. us all away. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tell me about the bathwater story. How did you? First of all, did you bathe in all the water you sold? Tell the truth now. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, I believe you. Yes, I did. I believe you. <laughs> yes, I did. did it you was ever... the whole fun of it. <laughs> and so, tell me, did you pee or fart in the water or anything like that? I mean, I think I spat in some of the jars. Right, right. Sure. That's good. Excellent. Yeah. Do, yeah, you that's normally, good. I mean, I, do you normally pee I, in the shower? Oh, good question, Hila. Um... No, I no? don't think so. Oh, <laughs> I think so. You never pee in the shower. Is that, is it weird no, to pee I, in the shower? No, I think it's weird not to pee in the shower. <laughs> frankly, or you just want to make me feel okay? No, you. Pee, I'm t- telling you, everybody I know pees in the shower. We've been over. <laughs> you should try it. So, well, first, before we move on to the the bathwater thing, the he, the ahago face. Am I saying that right? I think it's ahigao. Ahigao. Ah, uh, he go. Oh, he go. Uh, he go. Well, you should know, <laughs> damn it. I'm, I'm not even sure. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's like a, um, it's like a hentai thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's properly. Uh, it's it's a face that they draw in hentai of the the orgasm face. That's what they Can do. Can you do it's it like, for us? Can I see what it looks like? Oh my god! I, I, <laughs> Can you? Not? I, <laughs> I hate you know what you know what that was the worst thing right because uh, you know Ian I uh, met me at the Pornhub events yeah 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 so uh, at the Pornhub events I was so nervous right and then I was watching the show everything was great I was fine just sat there watching not being a part of it and then someone's like you know you got to come up upstairs and then they were like Asa Akira is going to interview you and you're going to be you know they're going to video you and you're just going to sit next to Asa Akira and she's going to ask you a couple of questions and I was like oh uh okay what questions are they going to ask me um they were like oh they're going to ask you to do the face and I was like please please for the love of god don't make me like because <laughs> the because the face is actually quite hard to do no, i've done really? it a, a few times because it's really easy to just i mean it looks dumb anyway but it's really easy to look dumb dumb mm. <laughs> so yeah that was that was really That's embarrassing bread Plus and on butter. The fact, you don't want to do a shitty so is, it, is it kind of yeah. like um you don't ask a comedian to tell a joke mm. So um, true. I should never have asked that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just I just I just it's easy to look very dumb doing it. Yeah. It's yeah. such a dumb face. It is I, a dumb face, and I don't want to like yeah. <laughs> look very dumb. <laughs> so I tried it once, and people I always get the meme treatment. But it's like you look at your nose, right? You cross your eyes, and you just stick out your tongue. So it's like, oh no, you look up. Can you try? Because yeah, you're in the kitty. Probably not it. You try, Dila. You're in the kitty. I don't kitty even show. know when. I don't. I'm not. Cross your eyes, look up, stick out your tongue. That looks like you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Try smiling while doing it. Like, smile. Oh, don't look tongue. dead, oh. right. Oh. Good. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay, Is that Ethan, good? Don't do that. No. <laughs> no, no. Can I do an OnlyFans now? <laughs> <laughs> you're not in the dentist. It's like you're trying to show us <laughs> all your teeth. <laughs> no cavities. No cavities. <laughs> See, that's what I'm worried I'll look like when you guys ask me. I'll be like, yeah, sure, and then do that. <laughs> I get it. So do you watch hentai? I, I'm curious. How did yeah? you discover it? You do. Is that your preferred uh, category of pornography? <sighs> <clears throat> no, but there is a lot of pluses from hentai. Mm. I mean, hentai is basically the perfect porn, right? It's everything done perfectly. The faces are perfect. The um, the boobs are perfect. Everything about it is super well done and as very aesthetic. Mm. So I I like watching watching it for. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean. To get off to it, obviously, as well, but because it looks and it looks really good as well. But I think casually, probably no. <laughs> ah, well, let me ask you this: the tentacles is that part of like is that like a a rare offshoot of hentai, or is that like mainstream hentai? The tentacles, like, do you enjoy the Honestly, tentacle thing? It, it's very much linked with hentai, but I don't think it's 
that common. Right. Mm. I don't think it's that common. I mean, it's. I think it's just heavily linked, like, oh, hentai tentacles. And obviously there is tentacle hentai, but it's, I don't think it's, you know, th- yep. there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. It pretty much, hentai covers every single category. Right. So that's, I guess that's one thing why people want to do it, because sometimes porn can be very, very similar. You know, you know it's, I mean, it's just do, 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 but it doesn't heard, cover the whole range. I've heard one girl say she watched hentai because she knows that there's no victims, because sometimes with porn, you never know, like, what's mm. really, if there's like a story going on back there. So it's like guilt free for her. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So what yeah. is your favorite category of porn, Zach was wondering? <laughs> Please indulge me. Um... <laughs> Zach, calm down, dude. I said I'd ask her. You don't have to fucking chime in. Uh, this is so embarrassing. I feel like it's... Well, I've... come on, okay. you're Belle Delphine. Okay, I will, I will. I will. Okay, but don't get like... You can't have like a certain type of opinion on me. This is just... Tell what... me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably, I mean, it's quite normal, gangbang, it's normal. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Round of applause for Belle. Beautiful. God bless. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, would, it's yeah. great. It's great. No complaints. I'm, thank you once again. I love the answer. Mm. <laughs> Have you visited Blocked? <laughs> <laughs> that website's crazy. Yeah, do you do you do you ever get into that one or is that too because you would actually, I actually be a, haven't. I you haven't. Uh, but I have yeah, seen I just, many, many Photoshop yeah. pictures of me. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say you might you would actually so be a perfect funny. candidate. <laughs> so would you ever Oh, I gotta clap again for the gangbang answer. Come on, everyone. Woo! Give me that. We love it. I can't wait tomorrow to see, like, <laughs> Belle Delphine's favorite porn yeah, genre is that's gangbang. That's, an epic <laughs> answer. that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, are you as sexual a person, like, as you portray yourself, or do you ham it up for the OnlyFans, you know? I am like I've always been Mm. um I've always been see it's it's so weird because I've always been like that one freak at the sleepover that was like oh we should play truth or dare with each other (laughs) and like like oh like we should do it where like I'm the guy and like you're the girl and then we're just meeting each other for the first time and then we kiss and stuff and I've I've always just been interested and I've like speaking about it and thing you know it's just it's fun and it's naughty and it's underground and it's kind of like, oh, should we be talking about this or should we not? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, it's just, um, it's fun. Cool. <laughs> it's really no, I fun. think it's great. I think that's, I think it's your career path is, is, uh, perfect. Um, do mm-hmm. you, I had a question. I forgot it. Well, I, I kind of want, it kind of makes me wonder about your, and I don't know how much you want to talk about it, but like your upbringing, upbring- were your parents kind of open about this stuff or are they okay with it now? Yeah, are they conservative um, or like, is it like a rebellious thing or is it all good in your family? Like the, you know what I mean? Are they embracing of it? Um, see, I come from a very conservative Indeed. family, like super religious. Mm, I oh, mean, wow. I've got like family in the church and they've, it's always kind of been that way but the thing is because my grandparents were so heavily associated with the church (laughs) they had um you know my mum and my mum was a you know she was the rebel kid so Mm. I was the kid from the rebel kid (laughs) (laughs) but but I've still been associated so much with a you know conservative upbringing um so I think I always I always kind of, I've always been very independent and I've always kind of found out things that I've liked. I mean, I was practically raised on the internet. I think everyone from our generation or my generation or whatever was, um, like every day after school, I'd go on the internet and I was kind of making my own person by choosing what I wanted to view online. Mm. And I guess I kind of molded myself and my interests around what I saw and I think that's kind of where all my interests kind of came mm. from is the messed up part of <laughs> the the internet that I was looking at. <laughs> Let me ask you this, because I remember you did this, you you were like signing Bibles, right? For, for... Yeah. So did that upset <laughs> your family? Something like that? 
Or did they not even know about um, it? They don't know. Yeah. About really? It. You think it would upset yeah. them, I wonder? Uh, see, with the Bible, even I was conflicted about it. Really? Because the premise of the Bible, me signing the Bible, was like, what self-obsessed person could sell the Bible and add price to it just because of their own signature? And I was like, that is such <laughs> an arrogant thing to do. And I was like, oh, should I do it or should I not? I don't know because I, d I don't want to come across like I disrespect Christianity because it was such a big part of my upbringing and still is a part of me today. Um, but I just, I just did it because I, I just... All of the ideas that kind of get get big make me feel a little bit weird about it. It's like <clears throat> bathwater. Oh, like that's kind of that's kind of weird. Or like, should I play about like me getting arrested? Like, oh, should I or should I not? It's always these things that make me question my decision mm. whether I should or should not do it. I usually push myself to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but those are the big ones. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We have yeah. a similar kind of feeling when we would go out and make videos. Yeah. Like Vape Nation, for example. Before we go out and shoot that, I would always go, I would always get this feeling like, is this so dumb that we shouldn't yeah. even bother? And then yeah. we go, oh, we should definitely do it. Yeah. It's so dumb. We it's, shouldn't even Yeah. At some point, we learned that whenever we have that feeling, we're like, that's probably going to be good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think that's a very, very accurate thing <laughs> so what does your mom think though she she's down she's accepting with with the whole thing or do you guys have do you guys have friction um i remember when i first started doing it we had one conversation about it and i basically said because i'm i i'm I, I think the worst thing ever is getting the feeling of getting exposed, like the feeling of like your parent coming to you and being like, I found this, explain. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to cut that immediately. Mm -hmm. I've heard other girls having this problem with their family and it's always worse when they find out. It's mm -hmm. always worse. Never do it. Never mm -hmm. lie. Never try and hide it because they'll find it. And yeah. they <laughs> trust me, they'll find it. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to her and I said, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, it's going pretty well. I'm going to continue doing it. And then she asked, you know, is it porn? And I said, it's not porn. It's, it's, um, it's erotic photography. Yes. Yeah. Come on, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, a, di it's it. a difference. Duh. When I was a kid, they would say it's the difference between like Playboy and Hustler. I don't know if that means anything to you. But yeah, adult photography versus like hardcore porn. You know? Yeah. So does that mean you're not going to be ever doing hardcore porn? Uh, no, it doesn't. Doesn't mean that I might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you, I, I might. See so, that, Zach? How, nice. did, how, how do you feel about that? God bless. Can't wait. <laughs> you're <funny. laughs> Well, you know, you know, everyone's waiting for that, though. I'm just saying, in the community. <clears throat> and then, uh, go ahead, Eli. You had a question. So that conversation basically. Was it and and your mom? Uh, she, I mean, she's really, really okay with it. Cause I, she, when she was younger, she kind of did um, modeling and photography and things like that, mm. and so she kind of understands. Yeah, I mean, she did some kind of you know lewd things, it's nowhere near what I'm doing, mm. but still, like you know how photography kind of yeah, you know yeah. Um, so I guess that kind of helped her understand. Mm. A little bit, and she, she's really fine with it. She, she's really fine cool. with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you've joked really about good. not having a dad. Is that true, or do you have a dad? <laughs> well, I mean, I have a dad oh. technically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but it, it is a, it's a tricky one that because I mean I joke about the fact that he disowned me because you know oh like i didn't have a dad haha <laughs> that's funny and i've joked about like uh, you know be him being so ashamed of me and things like that but in reality i disowned him so oh hmm. are you yeah. comfortable talking about that or is that like something you don't want to discuss I'm, I'm very curious because you mention it in your videos and your art and stuff about being fatherless um, he's just a huge asshole, hmm. such a huge asshole. Cause like, I think anyone who has an upbringing or even South African parents kind of know that there's a, 
there's a sternness with South African people that is, I, I've never experienced it in the UK. I've never experienced it in the UK. But when I was growing up in South Africa and I'd go around my friends' houses or whatever, I'd realize that there was definitely, there's definitely a different personality trait there hmm. that's so stern. And he, he was always very, um, you know, n- no jokes, no jokes, so serious. Hmm. And I've got this, um, with it, with, even within myself, I, I recognize characteristics that I've got from like my mom and my dad. And I've got this, this serious streak that runs through me a little bit. Sometimes hmm. I, I clock myself and I'm being like, you're being way too serious about this situation. Mm-hmm. You need to like chill out a little bit. Huh. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, South South Africa is kind of a rough place to grow up, right? I mean, when I was growing up there, I, w- I was so young, so mm. I didn't really see or understand or really, you know, I didn't see the whole thing. I just saw what children see, which is mm-hmm. um, fun stuff like the beach and um, having my own pool, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. And all, all the cool things. So everything kind of went over my head. But there is definitely difficulties about living there. I mean, I haven't been back since I was 11. Mm. And I feel so... Uh, mm. I mean, I shouldn't I shouldn't feel like this, but I've got this, such an apprehension of going back. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's maybe destroying this idea of what I created that was my childhood because I, I cherish my childhood. It's 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 like a perfect little chapter of my mm. life, and I don't want to go back and see, you know, see it and be like, oh, this isn't how I remembered it. Mm-hmm. So but, it, it's a, it's a tricky one. Does your dad live there still, or is he also in England? Yeah, he lives there. <clears throat> ah, okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of space between you guys as well. Yeah. But I think his I mean his his upbringing there must have been really tough cuz I know South Africa went through some really crazy stuff in the yeah. past, you know. Yeah. His upbringing was really really shitty. So I imagine that's why he is like he is. Mm-hmm. So I understand, I understand that. Um I know there was a lot of shitty things that happened back back then when he was growing up because he was born there so his parents and all this i'm not sure if his parents were i'm honestly i really i know my mum's side of the family but i really am unsure it gets all because i don't speak to him and (coughs) he never really spoke to me much as a kid either (coughs) so it's kind of hard to pinpoint this whole uh whatever (coughs) whatever (coughs) happened there (coughs) but he doesn't speak about it his history much um dan is telling me that we need to go to break So we will throw it to a quick break and be right back with Belle Delphine. So liquid IV, okay? It's a little packet of schmutz. You pour it in a water drink and you drink it. Now let me tell you about the genius of liquid IV. It's to help hydrate and energize you. This Mm. is the one that I've been chugging lately. It's got caffeine in it. Which is actually good for me because the caffeine is really acidic and it gives me heartburn. So this one's got like two hits of caffeine in it. It's got ginseng, matcha, guaisoa. I don't know what that says. Guaisoa. Ginseng. It's got all this stuff and all these like... It's like Pedialyte. It's got all these essential minerals and stuff. It picks you up. It energizes you. It hydrates you. Liquid IV. I love it. They've got all these different like uh, type formulas too. So this one's energy. This one's like we'll we'll pick you up in the morning with caffeine and get you all ready to go. And then they've got like the uh, the hydration formula hmm. just to hydrate you. And then this one's for uh, immune support, which nice. is probably loaded with vitamin C and all this stuff. Like, let's see, you know. So I I've done all of them, and it's really great. I actually, it's awesome. Put some ice in there. It's a nice, refreshing beverage. And that caffeine one is like shot out of a cannon, boy. I was like bouncing really? off the walls. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I made it. I cleared the whole game. I've been playing Hades. <laughs> I took one of those caffeine so shots and I was like, up all night, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full cleared that shit. Easy. <laughs> you know, you got flu season coming up. That's why you want to do the immune support. You got, you're that. trying to stay hydrated. If you're hungover, even, you want to do the hydration one. You know what I'm saying? It's all happening. 
One serving of liquid IV provides the same hydration as drinking two or three bottles of water alone. It's almost like a water paradox. We don't need water anymore. How does that work? It's a water paradox. <laughs> three, probably because it's got like the minerals and the hydration uh, and stuff that you would get from two or three right. glasses of water, you know? Three delicious new flavors. Sweet and juicy guava. Crisp watermelon and comforting apple pie. It contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, and much more potassium of, of a banana. You know, if you don't get enough potassium, you get, that's how you get cramps. Huh. So if you get really bad cramps, do this. Eat a, or, or eat a banana, but do this. <laughs> you know. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks. It doesn't have any artificial flavors or preservatives, and it has less sugar than an apple. It's made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. The, uh, what makes liquid IV so effective? Well, it's got the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivered via the water and nutrients right into your bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate more quickly and effectively than water alone. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water can give as much hydration as two to three bottles of plain water. They're on a mission to change the world. They've donated over 5 million ser servings of this stuff globally. In response to COVID-19, products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, uh, veterans, active U.S. military, and that's over 3 million servings so far. So they're also saints. That's really nice. Besides making a great product. Liquid IV is available nationwide at Walmart in the beverage section. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code H3 at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code H3 at liquidiv.com. Better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code H3. Honey, 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 honey. Look, we all know what's going on here. There's coupons on the internet just taunting you, laughing in your face because you're paying full price at your favorite online store and you didn't know that there was a coupon for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% off. And it's just right. laughing in your face. That's where Honey comes in to stop the laughter and get serious. They browse the internet automatically at checkout for the best coupons available for the website you're shopping on to make sure that your ass never misses out on a deal again. It's a free browser extension. It takes two clicks to install. It's easy as pie. It has 30,000 supported sites. All you got to do is click apply coupon when it pops up at checkout. You wait a few seconds. It searches for coupons on that site. And if Honey finds a working code, boom. Slam dams. Thank you, ma'am. Here's Ela was shopping the other day on Levi's. Mm -hmm. It's really the best. I... Was shopping here items that were already on sale, so normally I wouldn't even try to look for any additional discount. And then Honey did this; it, it was like pretty much another fifty percent off. I mean, how much was crazy. the product? Like two hundred bucks? This is the total two twenty. Oh, I see. And it's then, a straight up fifty percent off. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. That's the power of Honey, folks. They've saved seventeen million members over two billion dollars. They support all kinds of retailers from tech, gaming sites, fashion brands, and even food delivery. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and works with whatever browser you use. You can get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash h3. That's joinhoney.com slash h3 so they know that we sent you. Thank you very much. And thank you to Honey for sponsoring today's episode. Welcome back. We were just talking about how trash TV rules. You know, we started watching, like, I think our first trashy show was, like, 90 Day Fiance or something. That's true. And I just got hooked on, like, the trashier the better. Like, I'm, like, a dirty <laughs> junkie now, and I need, I need like, my hit to be even stronger every time. And I think The Bachelor is, is probably the trashiest show oh in the world. Oh, my God. But also the highest production value. Which, I guess that's why it feels like next level. It's a it's more just... lethal dose. <laughs> yeah. You, what, do you enjoy trash TV? I love it. But yes. as you said, it kind of, the level needs to get more intense each mm -hmm. time. That's it's so like, true. 
I want several fights on this episode because oh, there's yeah. one fight on last episode, <laughs> so this one needs to be more, you know? That's what this season of The Bachelorette oh feels God, like. So like the last good. episode, it's like every minute felt like th the season is ending oh, right I'll, now. Like this is. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Just, I mean, sorry, spoiler or whatever, but I don't care. Every, all the guys, you know the premise of the show, right? Yeah. So all the guys walked out because they were so over her. Or they fucking left the show. I'm telling you, it, 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 it. I don't know how they do it. It gets better every season. They literally just bounce. What if they don't, yeah. What if they don't like the main person? I always wondered that because they they're don't meant to chase this person. Right. So what if they're like, no? Yeah, and you. Well, usually the the main person has so many flaws. They don't have a job, and I think it turns into this whole thing of like. Mm -hmm. The scarcity where she's like the only woman in the world and they all get in the competition with themselves all these alpha males so i think they totally <laughs> lose sight of the fact that they actually have to be with this person she's just like her personality is like hey i'm hot <laughs> yeah pretty much that's pretty much her personality but god this season yes it's fantastic. amazing ian's watching it too i recommend everybody get on the bachelor at <laughs> so um but back to topic Yes, I did not come here to discuss The Bachelorette. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, are you waiting to do porn? Are you easing your mom into it? Is that is there a strategy to this? Um, I think just when the time's right. I think with everything that I've done online, I've always felt comfortable doing it. Right. So it took me, I mean, even when I turned 18, it still took me six months to be comfortable <laughs> to do lewd stuff. And then from then on, I just, you know, kind of up the notch and up the notch. So each time I've always felt comfortable doing it. So I'm just waiting for, you know, when I feel comfortable to do wow. that. <laughs> and then I'll do it. <laughs> I just heard the battle cry of a million sims. <laughs> You know, did it feel super crazy the first time you put out a nude photo? I have to imagine, because you said you had to, like, psych yourself up to it over six months, that it must have been, like, felt super crazy to put a nude photo of yourself online for the first time. No, because it's always been in stages. Mm. It's always been in stages. So it's always, you know, you'll do a photo like this, and then you'll do a photo like this, and then Got it's it. like this. And, and then it's just, it's so, it's so normal, like... For, for one example, I can compare it to this. When I started getting into, like, kawaii fashion, because I lived in a very small English town, and I'm sure it's, like, the same as, like, a small American town in the middle of Texas or something. It's um, everyone's the same, and everyone knows you, and everyone will look at you. So I started getting into kawaii fashion, and, and I felt like, okay, this is just going to be something I wear inside because I, I don't want attention outside in the real mm. world. That's too much. And then I bought this one pair of shoes, and these, these shoes were like big platform shoes, and I was like, I love them. I love them so much. I want to wear them every day. So <laughs> I, I just, one day, I was like... I am going to wear these <laughs> shoes outside. So I wore them and I was pranging the whole day. I was like, everyone is looking at me. This is so embarrassing. And then the second day I wore them, I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. And then the more I wore them, it was just easy. And now I can just mm. wear them and be like, these are my casual shoes, you know? Yeah. So it's just getting comfortable with things. Um, you always have to push yourself the first step. First step is always the hardest, and then slowly pushing yourself, it just gets easier and easier. And then, you know, you'll look back in the past and be like, whoa, you know, who, who was that or whatever. That's true. <laughs> and fast forward, uh, you know, a year and you'll be doing a gangbang on black.com. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and be wondering, who is this shy little girl? Um, but people, like, for example, you did that troll on Pornhub. I think it was an April Fool's joke. And people were genuinely mad, right? Just, yeah. just to give some background, Belle was like, I'm finally making a Pornhub account. And she uploaded videos of her, like, petting my pussy, and it was her with a cat. But she did, like, 20 <laughs> of them. But they were all really funny, I yeah, thought. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you put the effort in. It wasn't, like, a cheap gag. Yeah. You definitely put the work in for that one. But, your, but some of your fans were seriously angry. Did that surprise you? No. <laughs> yeah, I did it? Wow, okay. Of course not. Of course I, not. I, I knew I was going to get that response. Again, I had the same feeling. I was like, oh, should I do this? 
That's so funny. I would never think that people would be so genuinely mad. Actually, that might be the first time I heard about you. Is because I think maybe I, that was the first time. I was right. like, these guys. Yeah, I think maybe that was the first yeah. time. And I was like, I think that's the first time we talked about you. I on think the show. that's the first time I heard the word simp. Oh, interesting. I think that was my introduction. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just so blown away by how genuinely pissed people were. And I think I was more interested in that than anything. Um, yeah. Do you get like hate mail and shit where they're like, you fuck, I was going to beat off this day. I had my lotion and my tissue and now. Um. See, what I've noticed is <clears throat> I've really noticed a difference in hate, right? There's a certain type of hate I get from girls, and there's a certain type mm. of hate I get from guys. Oh. The hate I get from guys is so uh, plateau. It's so all the same. It's just like, um, you know, you don't you don't show this. You don't do this. Um, your it's just baseline insults. Sounds like, like you're insult ugly. Yeah. You know, it's just like you're ugly, blah blah blah. But with girls, right? They oh. are so strategic. Oh, they wow. will pinpoint the exact things that they can analyze from photos what i'm insecure about and they will blow it up right (laughs) and they will you know guys just say like oh you're ugly girls they will be like the proportion of this is wrong look at it zoomed up multiple photos lined up and it's like (laughs) it's crazy it's so different Oh my god. They're really going for it. They know they oh, know they that that baseline. The right. Yeah. They are not nice about it. They go right where it hurts. <laughs> oh my god. And so the baseline do the girls know how to get you. The dudes are like, I want to beat off and I'm angry because I can't. Yeah. But the girls are like, I'm gonna fuck this girl's yeah. whole I think, life up. I think the girls know what kind of things would hurt them. Mm-hmm. So right. they Right. You know, they know exactly the strings to pull to make you feel a certain way. They so know. It sounds like most of the hate doesn't bother you, but some of the hate does. Yeah, I mean, I've had like oh, whew, I've had some really, really harsh levels of hate. Like I've had I mean, this is quite personal, but w- when I was dating my ex-boyfriend, um I I broke up with him. It was completely, you know, mutual or whatever. Maybe it wasn't that mutual, but th- <laughs> it, it, it's, it was still, it was yeah. still, you know, a breakup's difficult. It's yeah, very yes, difficult. Yes. And I, the, the, the girls, they caught on to this, right? They knew that mm. a breakup had happened. And basically what happened was my ex-boyfriend slept with our mutual friend and the girls found out about this and then they started putting side by side photos of my friend and me because you know, my ex had slept with how could they figure that, that, out that so, like to compare the two of you because they they find out everything they find out everything That's it's psycho. crazy but oh, they yeah. um so they started like like uh, comparing our facial features to each other oh my God. and all this stuff and 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 it, it, obviously, it hurt. It That's hurt the pretty time. psycho. Yeah, it was uh, next level. That is next level. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Man. And like, <clears throat> this is like a re- That's like a dark part of the internet. I wouldn't even know where to find something like that. Mm-hmm. It's on forums and yeah. stuff. I mean, there's been so many uh, different levels of um, uncomfortable and scary factors <clears throat> of doing this job that I just wouldn't have expected from the beginning. Like my address being doxxed and people coming Mm, to my house. And then um, the whole, this girl, so unfortunate. She got, she was like an e-girl and she got um, killed basically. And it was everywhere on the internet because she was um, an an e-girl, right? And then I was, you know, I was interested in the story because obviously she's, you know, similar. I relate, I related to her or whatever, but by what she was interested in. And I was looking at the comments and there was a comment and it had a thousand likes on it saying Belle Delphine should be next. What? And I was just That's like, so, wow. Yeah, that. It's, it's just, I mean, you know, hate doesn't bother me at all. You can say anything, right? But there's some level of comments like saying I saw one recently and they go so <laughs> intense. It's like, I would like to see Belle Delphine's severed head on best score. And it's just, why? It, it feels, it feels just icky. Yeah. You know, it feels icky because I have had people come to my house and it just feels icky. Yeah. I oh, didn't yeah. like it. Do you have secure? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you have any, any, some extra level of security for your? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. 
That was my that was my first priority. Mm, yeah. 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 But you're so right. Those are the things you are not even aware of when you go into this kind of yeah. job, if you can call it a job. You know, when you start it, you don't even really know if it's a job. It just things kind of yeah. just go. But um yeah, it's wild. You have to become like an expert on security and uh, <laughs> PR and I don't know, it's just <coughs> you're your own team too. Like we don't have handlers and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, there's yeah. a lot to learn more than just making the content. Yeah. Like, why do you, ugh, do you ever think about like why do these people hate me so much? I mean, it's just like what what am I like? Why I know I know you're like provocative and stuff, but these people are talking about killing you. I mean, it's like what I don't know. It's just it just seems so obscene, so unfair, so ridiculous. I guess <clears throat> thing is, like I can I can kind of understand because there's this whole. I mean, there's there's subcultures of everything, right, on the internet. Um, there's subcultures of people who like gore and they watch all this stuff. And I suppose if a if a hot girl or whatever on the internet e girl dies, and there's can, can you? It's just like it's like um, such a big story. I mean, wouldn't it be? You know, if I died or something, can you imagine the amount of people that would comment on it, make tweets about yeah. it, talk about it? It would be it'd be um, because People on the internet feel relatable, right? And you can kind of, it's its different to TV and mainstream media. It's, it kind of feels like more like a girl next door type of thing. So if I died, it's just the the drama and the gossip or whatever from that is would be interesting. It'd be interesting to just view. And I suppose for the people who like things like gore, I mean, it would be great for them, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's also just, the, there's also the other um, side to it. It's just the more success um, that you get for people who don't have that success and they're just at home and they don't see how to get out of their situation. They're like, all she does is this and well, she's so successful. And it's like, it yeah. becomes into hate, yeah. you know, it's, it's from their bitterness. And sometimes I get really mean comments, you know, and it's like, yeah, I guess you you kind of just have to compart to car, like just try to compartmentalize it mm. because it's, it's they don't know you right they don't know who you are as a person but yeah it doesn't feel yeah. good certainly um, any other hazards of your of your line of work that you didn't see coming oh um, let me think about it. Um, I mean, you mentioned having a boyfriend that, I wonder how is that, like... Dating? Or, or dating yeah, in general. You, yeah. You know, what's interesting is I've got, I've got so many friends that kind of do what I do, mm. and it hasn't mm. impacted their relationship at all. I feel really? like so many girls, so many girls have an OnlyFans nowadays, right? That's true. Um, and it just... Maybe maybe I'm in this certain world and I'm I'm in this bubble and I'm not quite seeing the bigger picture of um, normal relationships or something. But within my whole world, it doesn't impact the relationship mm. at all. Good. So I really haven't seen it. It just feels so normal. Once you're in this world, oh my god, it's just <laughs> like uh, being an accountant or whatever, and you're just speaking <laughs> about accountancy. It's so right. just like normal. What do you think? There's like this whole um, movement. Like I saw this one conservative guy tweet out the other day. He goes, he says, sex work isn't real work. Do you feel like, what? what is this movement about of people trying to delegitimize de your kind of, your business? Do you think uh, of it as a business? Do you, do you, I mean, do you disagree with that statement? <sighs> I mean, technically, what I do is a business because I've got a whole business structure set up and all this, mm -hmm. you know, rubbish. Um, but I definitely don't feel like I'm a professional person. I've never been a professional type of person. What I do is so, um, it's more, I mean, it's just like on the creative field. It's not, no, nothing what I do is um, very professional. And maybe that's how these people view jobs. You have to be very like this is my job i'm in a suit and tie i'm very adult or whatever and i can understand from their perspective where they're coming from because you you just got to understand if if i look from their perspective right i see girl taking photos in her own room 
Like, that's not a job. Like, what is that? I can understand from their perspective, but I think there's so many different levels where it really does become a job. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. For sure. I think, um, I mean, I don't even really like to think that people have to argue on this it just seems so pointless well yeah he's like, they, um, they're trying to demean you your yeah. work to being like i think it's the same bitterness that yeah um to me there isn't even a question I mean, what, what is even you, the make, you make yeah whatever but you, you know. you're you're less upset about it than us so i guess there's really <laughs> there's no point to the conversation <laughs> i've heard you talk about daddy dom i don't know what daddy dom is are you into daddy dom and can you explain what daddy dom is i think i read that in your <laughs> patreon profile or something yeah yeah there's loads <laughs> of different levels to any type of kink so there's the, there's a whole spectrum to mm. daddy dom right yes so you can get into it as deep as you want to um but what I would think be the in, deepest level of daddy dom just to kind of give us some parameters here it's a very it's so controversial I just want to say i'm not into the deep end of it but if you were to go deep into it i mean it's just acting like a you know like a baby wearing nappies and you um, shit your mm. you shit in your diaper and all that and they yeah. change you that's yeah. epic Gross. yeah <laughs> do, they, do you but, fuck the baby though because uh, <laughs> that's what it is right <laughs> right i mean that's what it is i do not <laughs> i think i think i made her speechless because <laughs> that's the I daddy dog <laughs> it's like no, no one no. wants to go there in their head. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. This is like, okay, you're cosplaying as a little baby. Does daddy fuck you? I mean, it sounds, it is messed up. And so I'm wondering. Okay, I think that's that's the far end level of it, right? <laughs> but I think the main s- spectrum of it is the fact that girls find calling their partners daddy mm. because it shows dominance. It's not necessarily a father figure unless you view it that way. It can mm. be. It can be, but I think on the most side of it, it's just another word in play with things like master or um, oh. what's another word that people use. You know, this kind of dominant sure, yeah. label that uh, asserts this thing of power, like, you know, the whole teacher-student role play thing. Mm-hmm. It's this power exchange. And with daddy, I think it's kind of like a casual word of this that... Um, can just be used casually, I suppose. So you're you're submissive, in other words. Yeah, yeah. You're like the um, the little thing that's cherished that can be like oh, okay. naughty and playful and bratty, and you can you can tease like your daddy and things like that. I see. And um, the daddy, I think, <clears throat> the main important thing is the daddy looks after you. Got and um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, have you ever put on a diaper and shit your <laughs> diaper? No. Oh, okay. No, okay. I have never done that. <laughs> All right, because when I hear Daddy Dom, I'm like, oh, this shit's freaky with the pacifier and the diaper and you're in a crib <clears throat> and he's changing your diaper and all this. I was like, oh, fuck, that's freaky. See, but okay. saying Daddy's actually become really yeah, mainstream yeah. now, mean, though. I see it in, like, media <clears throat> everywhere. Oh. Do you call your, uh, I don't know if you're in a relationship, but if you were, would you call them Daddy just casually around the house? Um, I think... Yeah, I definitely like to. Hmm? I definitely like to. R. Kelly yeah. would like that. But see, <laughs> he would like that. But w- actually, when you described it, it made so much more sense because if he's your daddy, he's supposed to cherish you and protect you, right? So that yeah. whole aspect, I think, was lost on R. Kelly. Yeah. But how much how, how much does that say is fucked up about R. Kelly when he says, call me daddy, and then he pees on them? See, that's not cherishing. That's not a good dad. That's a bad dad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like good daddies, not bad daddies? <laughs> Do you think your interest in Daddy Dom has possibly any connection with the fact that, like, you are estranged from your dad? Do you ever wonder about how that may affect your life? Okay, first off, I want to say, when I say daddy, I am not thinking of my okay. dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That is not, that's yeah. not what happens. Yes. But I think... <sighs> Probably, to be honest, there's there's um there's a a caringness, you know, mm-hmm. a uh, a real attentiveness that I think I probably would have um should have probably had more during my childhood, which is why I cherish it so much now. I think it's like the best thing to be cared for and to be um 
you know, have someone attend for me. Like I, I obviously I'd attend for them as well, mm. but it's just this, this caring nature that I think is a really, really nice. I mean, I know this is a kink, right? But there's such a wholesome wholesomeness to it. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a <clears throat> no, yeah, caringness. No, I like the way you described it. It makes it actually makes sense to me now when I didn't understand it before. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. Can you be? Can you have a mommy if I want to be like uh -huh. a little boy? Can, yeah. Is there mommy? Yeah, loads dom? of people have. Loads of people have mommy mom, mommies. Mommy dom. Oh, mommies. See, it yeah. seems to be a, a pre primarily female thing, the daddy dom thing. But mommy dom, mm -hmm. you want to be my mommy? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> tried. Nice. I tried. <laughs> I, did, I don't it. like the mommy. It doesn't sound like sexy to me. Yeah, I mean, I know you're not like, thinking about your parents, but I prefer to keep the <laughs> that mm -hmm. whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to nurture me more, though. Okay. I would like you to baby me more. I think I baby you though. Yeah, you quite think a lot. Babies me a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Does whatever you Ela say, cut mommy. Cut your toenails. No, she doesn't no. do that. Where's my mommy at? Can I get some toenail <laughs> clipping? Damn. What else? What else should, should, should she do for me? Keep going. I know. I was just saying, in general. That's like something that like <clears throat> some couples like uh, do if they're like really care. care or I, I mean, what what do other couples do in what in this dynamic? Yeah, I know there. I know of women who like pimping, popping pimples. Oh, is that a mommy thing, disgusting. or is that just a freak? I think that's just a girlfriend thing. thing. <laughs> that's just well, a girlfriend some girls. Well, girlfriends I've known like girls who love it. They'll like seek it out. Like I want to pop your pimple. But like, I think I find it disgusting. Ela hates it, and I agree with her. Okay. Do you like popping pimples? <laughs> Oh, I'd love to pop oh, a pimple. Shit. That's so satisfying. It's it doesn't like, gross you out. <laughs> it's like, I mean, why do you think there's a show dedicated to oh, popping pimples? Yeah, no, I Girls know people love, love it. it. <laughs> so hold it's on, so do you satisfying. like Dr. Pimple Popper? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Because some of the stuff's on there is pretty gnarly. It's way beyond like your normal, like, I'm going to pop your pimple. They're like, I'm going to take this 20 pound cyst yeah, wait, out just... <laughs> and it's going to be like buckets of pus. But that, you like that. The gnarlier, the better. You got to go oh. right in oh, there. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> 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 Man, I saw some. We watched. We watched. Uh, we did a segment on the podcast where we watched some of the gnarly shit. I mean, there is some really horrific, horrific. Yeah, stuff. It's so. those images are burned in in my head. <laughs> um. Uh, do you consider yourself an artist at all? Because you know, when we got your mystery box, we're like, you know, this person's an artist. This person's a performing artist. What is what she's doing? Do you accept that? <laughs> um, I think no, no. I mean, obviously, there's levels of everything that I do that is creative. Like today, I did a Halloween yeah. spooky, <laughs> spooky Halloween background, and it's just yeah, like you, yeah, it looks fun. Great. It's just fun playing with creativity things. I mean, making your box was so fun. It it was it was the most fun thing I've done in so long. Um, <laughs> And I think, I mean, everything kind of, everything on the internet has creativity. I mean, you guys making your own videos, you, to, to think of a concept, to elaborate on that, and then to actually perform it, of course, requires levels of creativity. I feel like you take the mm -hmm. e-girl thing to the new level, though. I just, I, maybe I just <laughs> want to give you a little bit of credit and just how you've, like, um, really elevated your, your field, let's say. Um... I don't really want to. I like. Well, you, I think you, it's... I'm giving you the compliment. <laughs> you don't have to accept it, but it is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> what what is your main um, like medium or platform that you would say is the best thing for you? Is it OnlyFans or? Yeah. Yeah. OnlyFans. I mean, <clears throat> I. I don't really post YouTube videos and I yeah. post so rarely on Twitter. But the thing is, on my OnlyFans, I'm posting about 40 pictures a day. Oh, and wow. Like Holy videos crap. as well. I, I try and be 
as active as I possibly oh, wow. can. So oh. even though technically it looks like I'm really dead on the internet, right? Okay. I'm posting as much as I can on my OnlyFans because, mm-hmm. I mean, people pay me for it and I like doing it. So. Oh, that's wow. That's great. Well, that's a good plug for your OnlyFans. Zach, you're subscribed, <laughs> right? Do you, have, do you want a review or have any requests for her? Uh, that's fantastic. I Zach, mean, why, is, why do you have everything you have to say so sleazy, bro? <laughs> Come on, just give her a... No, no, no. It's, it's, you it's you are an artist. You really are. <laughs> You really, you really are an artist, <laughs> Belle, and I do appreciate that. Um, you, it, it has this great artistic element to it, more than just like a sexual thing. Yeah, right. And, like you um, care about that. It's, <laughs> I do. I'm an artist too. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It's definitely worth the money. <laughs> Can I just say, Zach, I love your TikToks. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Did oh, you see, my God. By the way, did you see the one where he was making fun of the girl in the skirt? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> got him. What, what did he, yeah, yeah, we got him. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a whole segment. Epic. We're going to do a whole segment on Zach TikTok because he, he's keeping it going. And I got to say, they're staying strong. Someone collecting his TikToks? Oh yeah, preparing for a content court. Yeah, he's gonna come oh, to court. Oh, <laughs> you know, um, did the OnlyFans thing is relatively new for you? Did that change your whole life? Yeah, mm. I mean, yeah, I it, it was crazy because I left the internet for a year. I thought my career was over. I I was like, I'm gonna have to move out of my house because I can't afford it anymore, and. I, 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 was, I was so in the mindset of thinking I had this opportunity and it's completely gone and everything's... Well, hold on, uh, hold on. let me back up here yeah. because I remember yeah. you disappeared. Is that after Instagram deleted your account? Yeah, Instagram got taken down. I tried to make a new one, got deleted as well. And then I was trying to think about what different avenues I could go down and I just mm-hmm. came to a complete road stop. So I was like, I'm going to... I need to think about this. And it took me a year. I was just moping in my own sad space, thinking that I've lost everything. Wow. And then this is so, so dumb how this even happened, right? I hate that um, it spurred from this. But, but, but basically my idea was I'm going to make these mystery boxes, right? I was thinking about this so far ahead of the time, like months before I came back, I was like, I'm going to make these mystery boxes to all the people that I really, really love on the internet. I'm going to send it to them. And that will be a way because I want to do this anyway. I've, I want to like give out gifts and hand make things because I enjoy doing this stuff in my spare time. I just wanted a purpose to do it. So I was like, that would be great. And like, it would get my name back on the internet and then I could come back somehow. <clears throat> and then I was doing that. And then I heard the new Goober video, right? And I was like, this video is genius. He's just come back from jail and it's an I'm back video. Mm. I need to use this for my ether I'm back, right? It's a colorful video. I, I, I need to replicate this. So I literally, the same day I saw the video, I went back and I started working on it. I painted all my walls and I thought of like the shots that I was going to do and I just filmed it <laughs> and then I posted it and it got like 36 or 5 or whatever million views. Yeah, and it was the crazy. views are insane. Wow. And that, yeah. that was when you announced that you were doing OnlyFans, right? Yeah, because I was going to come back on OnlyFans <clears throat> and OnlyFans has done really well. Really well. <laughs> I'm surprised that you took it so hard to be honest with you that you really, because you know, a lot of people were trying to guess, like, where'd she go? What happened to her? Mm. And, you know, not really as... I mean, you're such a fixture on the internet that people just like following your hijinks. Like, on the show, we talk, we talk about you quite frequently when you're up to all your antics. And it was a really mm. great, uh, interesting subject for us to talk about. <clears throat> mm. But I would never imagine that you actually thought that your career was dead because Instagram deleted your account. I mean, you had mm-hmm. followers and you had support all over I, the place. The, th- the thing is, my Instagram was at such a level of crazy interactions. Mm-hmm. I had like 200,000 comments per just photo, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I was already <laughs> plugged in with the idea that this was my normal, right? Yeah. I'd post right. a photo and get thousands of comments and thousands like million two million likes per photo and this was my normal yeah that's all and I, it was it was so crazy and i kind of got 
I was like, I've got this this megalomania of a platform that's doing amazing. And then, boom, it, it went just like that. And then I was like, right, fuck, okay, what do I have left? I've got a, I've got a Twitter that gets like 3,000 likes per thing. And I was like, I'm dead. That's it. Mm. <laughs> I'm dead. Even though that's great. Even though my Twitter yeah, was no, great. I, I, got I was you. just I know used you to like this yeah, level. You, you so. didn't see the path anymore of like, yeah, where are you going to go? It's it's easy to build up like this. It's really hard to come back when you go there to come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you? How were you making money back then when you were on Instagram? You had a Patreon. Yeah, I had a Patreon, which was pretty much like a more safer work version of what I'm doing on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. So that continued through through that period, right? Or did you you disappeared from Patreon too, right? I literally left the internet. I I didn't. I mean, during this year that I was gone, I pretty much didn't go on the internet at all. Because whenever I went, I would just feel so shitty yeah. about everything that happened. What was so, that like, the being away from it for a year? Um, so bad at the beginning. I was just, I mean, I couldn't, I could, I just, I was thinking in my mind, like, I, I can't. You know when you move out for the first time, it's amazing. You're not under the roof of your mom. Your mom doesn't have to tell you, like, do your laundry. You've know, mm -hmm. got to do the washing. And I just gotten used to this being the 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 king of my own ho household. And I was like, I really can't go back now. Yeah. I, I I can't go back and being told what I have to do or things like that. Um, it was hard. I took it really hard at the beginning. And then six months down the line, I just started hanging out with my friends again. And that was really good. And I traveled a little bit before, you know, Corona and everything. And that was really good. And it gave me, it made me breathe again. And it made me think, okay, that's all good. But, you know, I was... I was still in the place where I'm like, I can't afford my house if I don't do something. Mm. So I really had to do something. So I did yeah. it. That must have, mm. You know, the whole thing was weird because your account, I mean, it was obviously provocative, but I've seen tons of accounts with showing the same amount. I mean, you weren't nude in it. Did they ever give you a reason why? Or is it just like, see ya? I think it was nudity, <clears throat> with, like, you know, sexually explicit, which is... <clears throat> I I was like, that sucks. Is that like fifty percent okay. of what Instagram is? It's weird because yeah, I see it all the time on Instagram. You know, was it true? I think it, there was like angry simp's over the Pornhub thing that were like mass reporting your account. Is that what happened? I mean, I probably did get mass reported because that's usually how the, the the different counts work. Like, I mm. I think I think that's how the algorithm works, but I'm not too sure. I couldn't say. <clears throat> I so, know. how did you find out? Like, uh, when did you first find out your account was was shut down? And then, kind of, how did, what did that feel like? Um. Well, I had like troubles with it before, <clears throat> and it kind of came back after a day or like mm. a week. So, mm. honestly, this time I wasn't stressed about it i was like it's going to come back of course uh, it's going to come back you know and then it didn't come back and i think it really hit me like the month afterwards when i wow. you know I, I you feel lost you feel lost as like an internet person when your life is on the internet i mean my life was It has been for so many years. I've been an internet person. I've all my friends were on the internet, and to have this just taken away. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. kind of crazy how big those things are for us. I mean, you spend like <clears throat> almost the whole day on it. It's like a part of you. you I mean, know? it's a connection. <laughs> it's a connect. It, the internet is a connection thing. You know, it connects yeah. so many different people all around the world to each other. It's so much more than just the picture website or whatever yeah. you know all these things have so much meaning to each other you know you you have such value on certain things <laughs> sorry to go all deep on you <laughs> it's kind of a problem in a way because you have these are like privately owned companies but now they have so much important in our life and, yeah. the, and the fact that they can just erase your account and fuck your life up like that mm. it's pretty wild yeah you know <laughs> So you've made it through. You are the queen of OnlyFans now. Sir, you do you feel like you're in a better place now? Now since that you went oh through my, all that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I'm so relieved because I really thought it was. I thought it was. I thought I was done for. But now, 
I'm just, it just feels like I've woken up and I'm in a really good place and it feels so good to feel comfortable, to just feel comfortable in this own little space of the internet. I mean, OnlyFans is good with, you know, sexual content. So I know that regardless of what happens, they're not going to get rid of me. Right. So it's a safe place and a good place to be. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy for you. You know, it seems like you're, it seems like you're really in a good place. Why is it that you're on this show right now? Because you've you've been so <laughs> secretive, you know, your whole career. So all of a sudden you're on a podcast. You just did another podcast too, Max yeah. Mofo's podcast. So what is now? Uh, why the change of heart? Um, thing is, I've always had like quite a a difficult relationship with my own voice as in I've always hated my voice and I've never liked speaking and even like with friends or whatever I'd never be the one speaking because I just I just hate it so I've always been so shy about it I mean even with the bath water video or any of these videos it takes me so many records to get a a video that I'm comfortable with. And even then I'm like, oh, this sounds, I I just hate it. I feel uncomfortable Mm. with it, you know? Um, And I think that is part to play from when I, because when I moved to the UK, I had the strongest South African voice ever. Mm -hmm. It was so thick. And, uh, you know, in in a small town in uh, England, it was, you know, I had a weird, different accent and everyone loves being like, oh, this is a weird accent. And they'd like be all weird and funny about me. So I was really insecure about that. So I made sure to try my hardest to speak the most English I could speak so I could sound like them mm. so that they didn't, um, you know, pick on me or whatever in this weird way. I wouldn't call it bullying. It's just kids being kids. Mm -hmm. But I've always had a weird relationship with it. So when I was on the internet, I tried to always think of ideas that didn't require me to use my voice. So small videos of me eating something weird or throwing something weird on my face or doing certain things. I think the only thing that required me was certain YouTube videos, which I'd pre-record afterwards as well. But now I'm just in the place where... I just want to move this away. I just want to Mm. move it away. And I want to do what I want on the internet because the internet's fun and the internet's a good place. And I want to be able to speak to people. And I don't want to be this 2D person anymore because I think I am more than that. Even if I'm not the funniest or the most interesting person on the internet, I still want to show who I am beyond how I look. Mm. I'm really happy you're doing that because I feel like we felt that there is a lot more to you and... um, just being only kind of like behind the character all the time it it kind of gets um like yeah like it, it's just so narrow sometimes and i yeah, think for you to yeah. be able to grow and go other places or just expand it, this is so much better and i think for us it's really nice to get to know you and it i mean you're definitely an interesting person so <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wanted to have you on the show ever since, ever, for a while. So I'm really happy that it, that it uh, got to finally happen. And, yeah, you know, you. I'm sure the other things will come up. I hope you're, you're down because I'm sure that Zach is going to do this or that. And we'd love to, you know, get Bella's opinion on oh. that or whatever's going on. For example, Definitely. here. Okay. Definitely. Okay, good. <laughs> well, for example, do you wipe from the front or the back? <laughs> Okay, I was thinking about this before because I know you ask this to every person. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking about this before. So I was at the loo and I was like concentrating like, okay, what do do I do? And then I realized, I I think I do something that's, it might be different. I wipe separately. So I, if I'm wiping like, you know, my my butt, even though I don't really poop because that's disgusting. (laughs) But if I am, I'll just, you know, do that bit, and then if I'm doing my front, I'll just do that. Oh, you bit do a separate it. wipe, but when oh, yeah, that's really interesting. Do you ever do both at the same time? <laughs> How okay. would you be able to reach? No. I don't know. I don't have a vagina. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, huh? Well, but that's you, a new but one. But when you wipe, well, when you wipe, that is new. But that's like new. when you wipe the ass, do you go under or or like front or back? You know, I'll just you? like lift my butt up a bit and like yeah, arch forward the and then like you know yeah, yeah. you're you're a proper you're a proper girl you wipe <laughs> fair enough this one's from zach so forgive me 
He asks, Bell, we see that you follow Fleshlight on Twitter. <laughs> Zach, seriously? Would you ever what? consider having a Bell Delphine sex toy? <laughs> That's Zach. That's so inappropriate. <laughs> oh my God. So, yes, I was actually speaking to them about it. And then I realized that, well, I mean, obviously, it has to be a real mold of yeah. your pussy, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, if I do this, everyone will be able to see what my pussy is like. And no problem with that. Which but it's people just, haven't seen, right? Yeah. No, people haven't seen right. that. <laughs> so I'm kind of, if I do reveal that, I think I'd want to do it in a more epic way mm. than like, yeah. th it's on this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the next logical uh, step. So, so Zach, yeah. there's a chance, yes, that that's going to be coming to fruition. <laughs> Beautiful. God, you're going to make so much money from that thing, dude. I wonder what's your cut. Do you know what's your cut on a flashlight? If you're like, if it's you. I, I don't know what the cut would be. I, yeah, I, I didn't it's, go it's that you, far. It's your, you know, it's it should your be shit. a pretty good cut. Yeah, you should be getting a pretty good cut from that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know they have like mouths and buttholes. Would you ever do like a mouth mold? Oh yeah, that would. I would actually do that. So get your mouth out there, dude. People, you're ready. People are ready for that. Zach, would you be happy with the mouth or would you need the vagina? I feel like anything. Anything, anything. Zach. You're every. <laughs> I, I I knew it. I was gonna say anything. You would do. <laughs> do the ear, and you'll you'll be all over and it. What about ear? my nose? And would you do an ear hole? <laughs> yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> an eye hole. Just fuck it. Do it all. <laughs> yeah, we got. I feel like that would be a good niche to like do the first ever ear flashlight, Belle Delphine. <laughs> <laughs> People would buy it. I'm pretty sure there'd be plenty of purchases. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you believe in ghosts? Have you ever seen a ghost, a UFO, or anything like that? It, it's a really, really weird one. I think, yes. Yes. Mm. I've had one really... I mean, I don't, I, the thing is, I hate speaking about this stuff. I hate speaking about this stuff because Why? everyone's like, everyone's like, oh, really? Wow, that happened. And nobody believes you. I'm you not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not dumb, right? <laughs> I understand because I've heard other people's ghost stories and I'm like, yeah, but there is a logical explanation behind it, obviously. Like, a, like plumbing or something, making a noise or mm -hmm. like something in your head that sounds like a voice or something. I'm, I, I understand, but there was this one time. I feel so dumb saying this Let's story, but, <laughs> but I was, you know, at home in my room on my computer as always. Don't know what I was doing, but it was really late because I always stayed up late because like sleeping patterns always nocturnal, and then. My bed just fucking moved. I'm not even Your bed joking moved. me. Hmm. My bed moved. Did you look underneath? Moved. No, I was, you know, when you feel like paralyzed and you're like, oh, was that? I can't move, Zach I can't breathe or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was weird. It was very so weird. What and kind I of always weird? think about it. What kind of movement was it? Was it like a big jolt? Did it like scoot to the side? Did it drag? What happened to your bed? It was like if you were to. It wasn't like this. It was more like this. Hmm. Oh. So it went away from the wall at one side. And there's the thing is, I've thought about it, and there's no explanation explanation for it. Oh, so there's, you were? The, I don't understand. I don't understand. And so how did you understand. react? You just stayed in bed, kind of just paralyzed with fear. I literally waited there until the sun came up because mm. it was late at the time, and I just waited until the sun came up. And then when I heard my mum waking up and she was making breakfast, you know, you kind of feel safe. When you start hearing yeah. these yeah. like other people awake, and that's the point where I kind of like got awake and I looked under the bed. Obviously, nothing was there, huh. and I've just to this day I've never been able to understand it myself. And I feel like there's no point telling people because I was the only one there. I, I, what what am I meant to say? It was just no, a weird, weird, a really thing weird thing that happened. Weird thing that happened. Is it possible you were? You were wide awake when it happened? Is it possible you were dreaming and you thought you were awake or something like that? No, absolutely no. not. I've had no. no record of me ever doing something like that. No. <laughs> and you're sure the bed moved. You got up and you looked and it was out of its place. There, there, 
first off, there's no way to like, I don't, you can't jolt a bed like that unless you're on a small metal frame bed or something. You can't move it with your body. And when I woke up, because I woke up, it was light outside. My mom was there. I was checking under the bed and I walked away and the bed was away from the wall. Mm. So the bed moved. <laughs> the bed moved. The bed huh. moved. And <laughs> It freaks me out and it skips weird tingles down my body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's creepy. But what about you guys? I Nothing? The only thing that comes to mind is like, I was really young when it happened, so I can write it off as like, who really knows what happened? Yeah. But I woke up in the middle of the night. I was a really young kid, or actually maybe in the morning, I don't know. And um, I had a little window facing the backyard. And I remember looking at the window and a face looked through and it was like the creep and it was a pretty high window. I remember that it was high up, like eight feet up or something, you know, so it was tall, whatever it was. That was always my nightmare, like to look at a yeah. window and all of a sudden see a face. But it was like a you. fucked up face, like oh. a Frankenstein looking face just staring at me and then it went away. Jeez. So it was like staring at me and then it went away. And I was so freaked out. I just tried to go back to sleep. And I just have that that one memory. That's the only time. It could have been anything. I mean, it could have been a person for all I know. I don't fucking know. But. Maybe. <laughs> I know what it was. I know what it was. It was Zach? a premonition of you thinking of you as Uncle Fester and seeing your own reflection as Uncle Fester. <laughs> yeah, the like, yeah, maybe it was me as Uncle and Fester. And it scarred you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those weird time loops. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never went back in time as Uncle Fester. Maybe it closed. Maybe you don't know yet. Yeah, closed up already. Did you like my outfits? Did you? Or have you been watching Frenemies? I've been watching all of them and the courts. Uh, the oh, content, the content court. courts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely amazing. That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> what do you think about dudes that pee in their basements? Turn on or turn off? <laughs> oh my god! I pee in my basement. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You would pee in your basement. I pee in my basement. I just I pee, pee in, in my basement. basement. <laughs> Play the soundbite. <laughs> You have the soundbite, Zach? Oh, Zach is not functioning. Right yeah, now. Zach's got. I don't know if he's got his hands on his keyboard right now. I was playing it. Can you hear it? Oh, no, no, I can't, we can't hear, hear it. it. Oh, yeah, I've been playing them. Oh. <laughs> um, do you want? Uh, are you really a gamer girl? Do you game? What games do you like? Uh, I do game kind of, but not in the way that's like, I, I don't think I would categorize myself as a gamer girl at all. I mm. used to play so much RuneScape back in the day. Oh, though. RuneScape? Mm. Yeah. That's why I added the buying GF thing on your box. So yeah, I, I never, bu RuneScape. you know, I, I don't know if you remember EverQuest. I used, that used to be my game. I never played RuneScape. Uh, I think it was around the same similar? period. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you have any favorite anime shows or television shows that you're currently watching or want to recommend? Um, I mean, I think for anyone that hasn't watched an anime before, Your Name, such a good, beautiful movie. Oh, is that the super sad one that I keep hearing about? Yeah. 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 You should watch it. Wait, is that a Miyazaki one or no? No. Is that his new movie? No, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I hate sad stuff. I just I get I get so emotional. <laughs> it ruins my whole week. Like There's I, more to it than it being sad. It just have something sad in okay, it. Or okay, you, you okay. could choose you could choose to laugh at it if you really wanted to be a psychopath. No, wow. Well, <laughs> Doesn't okay. have to be a sad movie. You <laughs> <Sure>. could just. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's good advice for anything you do in life. <laughs> and I just guess my final <laughs> my final question, which I think we've got some insight into, but where do you see your career going? From here, what's the next step for Belle Delphine? Black.com, um, besides black.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. I think I might end up giving the people what they want. Oh! <laughs> nice. <laughs> what's the timeline on that? Um, well, she know, said whenever she's ready. <laughs> it's a secret. When she's ready. Thank you, Hila. <laughs> Thank you, Hila. That's so incredible. <laughs> yeah, Hila's the best. Um... That's it. That's all it is. That's all there is. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I think you covered a lot. I mean, obviously, there's always, always more to talk about, but, you know. <laughs> well, there'll be more times. There I'm looking yeah. forward. I'd love to include you in some kind of... Uh, yeah, I was thinking to myself um, when you thought that, like, you know, everything was over and you kind of just went away from everything. Um, I feel like that was so uh, far from the truth in a way mm -hmm. but like 
if you ever need a place to do something, you can always yeah, collaborate you, with us on if stuff. If you need it, if you need us to announce your OnlyFans, we'll do it. <laughs> Whatever the hell you need. Oh my god. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> oh, that's so. That's you guys are so nice. You guys are so. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to think of a fun segment we could do on the podcast because I think it would be. It'd be great. Where'd you get that yeah. sword, by the way? I'm surprised that thing made it. The sword you <laughs> sent us. You know, you know those um videos of those like guys cutting through water bottles, like yeah. promoting oh, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's from them. But that thing really? is so not. Wait, cold steel. Yes. It yes. Is? What? Yeah. That's a cold steel sword. Yep. Oh my Did, god. That thing is so dull. I felt like yep. there's no way. I thought you got like a. I'm Wait, that, was that like a thousand bucks, that sword or something crazy? No, they're not a thousand. No, they're super it, expensive, the cold steel. They, they're kind of, it was kind of expensive. Yeah, the cold steels are pricey, though. Really? Yeah, that's real weaponry, dude. Cold steel, damn it. <laughs> steak in the boot? Steak in, that thing's not going to cut through a steak, though. But it's those people, right? Those are the steak in the boot guys, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was really sharp. <laughs> was it not sharp? No, it was super I, dull. I, I, I have to admit, I did play with it before I wrapped up and gave it to you. So I was it's like, heavy, huh? like cutting through like snakes. It's really heavy. Yeah. yeah. So, super big. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> love the sword. I've used it in TikToks and Baba Booey to you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and the anime waifu pillow. Amazing. Yeah. You yeah, just need a fedora. Right. Yeah, I, I had the. That's that. right. I was missing the fedora. <laughs> well, I blame you for not sending it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm you so should have thought of that. <laughs> All Just right. destroy everything. It's rude. Yeah, burn, I'm burning it. <laughs> well, Belle, thank you for coming on. It was great to chat and get to know you. Yeah. And I think you're terrific. And we're all fans here at the HD Podcast. Yeah. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. And thank you, everyone else that's here as well. Love you all too. All righty. Oh, thank you for coming <laughs> on. Fucking ass, we got to listen to me. Hey, 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 hey.